Well, it's not good, but it's not seriously worse than had been presented in the May budget earlier this year. The deficits are now uh, 10 billion worse uh, over four years. Uh, to be honest, that's a rounding error uh, in terms of budget forecasting. Uh, but there are still two big assumptions uh, around budget repair. One is that, that not the government, but Canberra, uh, Parliament, gets its act together, you know, gets that there's enough compromise out there from the opposition and, and from uh, the crossbenchers uh, to, to let further uh, budget repair go through, and that's a big assumption. You know, both sides in, in opposition have been better at saying no than yes. Uh, and the other assumption is that China stays healthy enough. We've had bigger downward revisions to previous estimates, although this one and the last two have come not so much from falling commodity prices as Wayne Swan had to deal with and Joe Hockey in his first budget and mid-year statement, but rather from the effects of slower than expected growth in wages and employment. It's going to take uh, a lot of good news out of China and, and I'm not sure that we'll see it. And it's going to take a lot of compromise out of Canberra and I'm not sure we'll see that either. Um, the, the need for budget repair I think is quite strong, um, most obviously because at some stage, uh, not imminently, but at some stage the world will throw another recession our way and, and you want at that time the Treasurer of the day to use the budget as a shield uh, against that recession. They made some savings, two and a half billion dollars, uh, which is great, but do remember that it's across a four year period in which the, the budget will spend uh, 1.7 trillion dollars. So, you know, nice to see some savings, uh, but not really big bucks. I mean, there are some measures here that had been telegraphed beforehand in terms of another crackdown on welfare recipients and some measures designed to tackle the black economy. Uh, previous treasurers have announced things like that in the past. Sometimes they've produced significant improvements in the budget bottom line. Often they haven't. We'll just have to wait and see where these ones end up contributing or not. While the government could have maintained past practice of forecasting coal and iron ore prices to remain where they've been in recent weeks, and that would have allowed them to have presented a budget bottom line that was a billion or more better per annum than has actually been presented in my EFO, I think the government did the right thing in being prudent about that. Troubled. The budget is still troubled. Uh, you can't have anything else if good economics is all about budget repair, but good politics is not.